Good morning. Stuart from SL Services. Today we're going to do a service on uh, Neyland Combat P, um, including anode change actually, because um, the client's rung up, got an anode alarm, which is a bit naughty, because um, we don't like to get the actual anode alarm, we like to do them every year anyway. So anode alarm is just here, so you can press that, it says anode fail. Uh, approve event, your machine will continue to run anyway, so that's fine. Clients very kindly had a shower because we want to get that uh, water temperature down because when we change this, just in case any water comes out, you don't want to burn yourself. Um, to turn the unit off, uh, go to, oops, turn the unit off, go to settings, go to general settings, and go to service, and then turn your machine off. Okay, next stage is uh, isolate the tank. So you'll want to uh, You'll want to find your lever valve for your hot and cold, which are located hopefully in your unit. And also, you'll need to uh, get your hose pipe on your drain cock at the lowest part of your unit, which your plumber will hopefully handle, handily have provided. So now you can find out if you've, if you've isolated the tank. If you just twist your TMP valve like so, you'll probably end up with just a dribble or eventually absolutely zero coming through your tun dish here. Right, now we need to uncover the anode from the top third of the tank, like so. These two wires are nothing, uh, nothing to be frightened of, there's no power to them. Um, neither are they polarised, so when you refit them later on, you'll be able to um, put them on in any order. You can do so like that, you can always whip that back there, it won't harm the tank in any way. And then it should be finger tight, just like so, and you can take this out here you might get some water out of there if you do that means you haven't isolated the tank correctly because that is uh, the hole within the anode okay next thing will be to uh, um, open the drain cock uh, obviously this we've just undone this with a with a with an adjustable spanner um, so this is only finger tight anyway just for video purposes so that's open now so we can see now we've got a slight dribble coming out of the tank. Um, what we need to do now is crack the anode um, to, to, force, to force the water out to drain it down faster. So we've got a 36mm socket and a breaker bar. And we're going to crack the nut on the anode now, um, which will which will give it give us enough uh, force to push the water out at an acceptable rate, because currently obviously it's only a dribble. So um, this thing here, you can take that out, or if you've got a socket that's deep enough, you can zip this round. This will, this will be taken out anyway to put back onto uh, the next anode when it goes back in. So as you crack the nut on the anode, you should be getting obviously water escaping noises, gloggings and so on and so forth. And then outside at your, uh, at your hose pipe, you'll be getting a steady trickle out of the end of the hose pipe. Right, a bit of PTFE around the anode. Don't put too much on. It doesn't strictly need it because it's got a plastic um, plastic O-ring on it. But we always just put one, um, one and a half wraps, I would say, around the thing before insertion. Your anode will arrive with a plastic insert in the end. It'll be too tight to get out, um, finger tight. So just take that out. And then you can take this part out because that's the uh, we there you go a bit of a uh, bit of air escape in there and you put that back into the new anode like so and you can remove now we've drained the tank of course <laughs> and remove the old anode this one has had an alarm so it's completely depleted usually that'll look about that long probably and look like a piece of coral Okay, so time to put the new anode in. And uh, usually find it's easier to use the socket to balance it because the, the anode will pull and then, of course, obviously the last thing that you want is any, any cross threading, of course. So that's nice and nice. So you should be able to put it in with your hand till you get to the plastic O-ring that we were talking about earlier. And then you'll start to, then you'll need your... Uh, breaker bar again to wind it in the full way no need to over tighten it of course like I say the plastic o-ring uh, does its job really rather nicely and that there is 
plenty. So, you know, a good, good deal of pressure, but not too much. And just re so now time to uh, reconnect the cables. Like I say, they're not uh, they're not polarized in any way. So if we it's like so. We tidy the cables up a little bit like that if you need to, and then you'll be able to get your foam bungs. That's my beautiful assistant. Thank you. And put that back together like so. And then that's the water side almost complete. Okay, just gonna uh, tighten this drain cock back up and remove the hose. Block off these, put these lever valves back into, into operation. Then we'll be ready for a refill. Okay, so we've buttoned the unit back up, put all the front panels back on. So now we're gonna uh, uh, go back to the controller. As you can see, the unit's turned off, so you've got a strike through your fan speed, a strike through your hot water. The anode alarm is still present, that's because we've not voided it yet. So if we go to general settings, go to service, go to on, turn the unit on, go back to the home screen, turn on the anode fail alarm, approve the event, now we've changed the anode, and we're good to go.